Good morning and welcome. From UM? Yeah. Are you okay with the dog? She doesn't bite. She's very friendly. Come on in. We're planting eight trees. And whenever we plant them, we must water them. Everybody has to carry one in. Okay? So what we do is, this is a, this is a pond with all our livestock, uh, livestock, our fish in it. Because we don't want to bring the fish, we're just going to use this to prevent the fish from going into the bottle, okay? okay. Mosquitoes like you, put it at the back. Don't put it in the front. Somebody yesterday did Iron Man. Somebody yesterday did like this, Iron Man. And then you're breathing in the smoke and then you get a really bad headache. <laughs> okay. Anybody else is a mosquito magnet? Okay, she is. Okay, cool. Um, when you're all ready, we can come over that side. You know how to use these bags, right? Oh, yeah. Yes, there's two straps there. So you can have, you put them in a backpack. It's like a backpack on your back. Hands free, one chunko. Okay, very quickly, I won't keep you long. Welcome to Free Tree Society. Thank you so, so, so much for joining us and helping us to green nature. Okay, I hope today will be a very interesting day for all of you. If you don't know, Free Tree Society has been around for 10 years, 11 years now. We teach people how to plant trees from cuttings or from seed. And then when the plants are big enough, we give them away for free. And the whole idea is to get people looking after nature and get people planting for nature. Yeah, so if we were all gardeners, if the whole world were gardeners, we would have a more green place to live on. Our planet would be much greener, right? So that's the whole idea. We want to make more and more people become good stewards of nature. Carolyn, Carolyn Lau. I'm the president of newly elected president of Free Tree Society. And just behind our nursery, the whole area is called Federal Hill or Bukit Perskutuan in Malay. Um, and there is the longest, oldest running environmental NGO in Malaysia called Malaysian Nature Society. They've been always trying to save this uh, Bukit Perskutuan and the little patches of forest left in it. When they had a bit of funding in 2016, they started the urban community forest of Federal Hill and they cut with the help of volunteers and NGOs like us, like Free Tree Society and other NGOs as well. They helped cut, We all, everybody chipped in to help cut trails through these little pockets of forest. And the whole idea was to bring people in, to use them as recreational space, but also to get them, get people familiar with what is there because you cannot protect what you don't know. We, because in the proximity of being near to one of them, the Pulai Trail, we were asked to be the caretakers and we jumped on, the, on that. We really jumped on that and now it's become our outdoor classroom. And we bring in groups twice a week um, to help plant up and increase the biodiversity in there and also to help maintain the trail because all trails need maintenance and because we don't have funding for it, it has to be a community thing. But it's brilliant because it's, it's great for community building. It gives people a sense of ownership and a participation. Um, and that's what Free Tree Society wants to promote, hands-on participation. This is Bangsar. Bangsar used to be rubber estates. Now rubber trees are from South America. They are not native to Malaysia, even though they're a tropical tree. Our nation, Malaysia was built on rubber because that was a big export then. And so the thing is, this area in here now have a lot of rubber trees because they produce a lot of seeds every year, twice a year, a lot of seeds. And they're so um, tenacious, they're so amazingly adaptable, that most of them sprout. So in here we have more rubber trees than we have native trees. We want to slowly take away the rubber trees to plant the trees that you guys, more of what you guys are carrying and will help us plant because this is better food source. We want more space for native species. Come, come Sylvie. Trees give back so much, plants give back so much more than, and people are always very attracted to them. And, and they're the most obvious entry into nature as it were. You can't give people snakes to look after. You can't give people you know, insects to look after, you can some, but plants most is, is, is the most ex accessible entry point into nature. No matter what level of gardener 
that you are, one person, a person may be, we, full Trivici Society hopes to flesh out the real value of, of planting and gardening. And planting trees is not just for one purpose to green, it's to provide for the whole ecosystem, not just for humans, but for the biodiversity around that tree, uh, for the wildlife and insect life around that tree. Okay, we're going to plant one tree here. I did one here yesterday. This is a rubber tree. This one behind you. You see how I tried to kill it slowly? Yeah. I cut away the outside layers. This is called where the phloem and xylem. In the outside layers where the water can come out from the ground and the sugars from the leaf when they make sugar can go down to the roots. So I tried to cut it away so that then there's no more food and water going to the top. But rubber tree is very strong. Rubber tree is tenacious and it's going to live. So you can see now it's produ producing roots here. I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty. And it's trying to live. I want to live. This has been one year now and still it's not dying. So I'll have to come and cut deeper. But eventually we want to get rid of this tree. When we get rid of this tree, you see how much canopy space will open up? Yeah, there'll be a lot of canopy space. So I'm thinking that when this tree goes, we can plant in here. So, uh, cherry trungano, maybe your, no, rambutan. Who's got the rambutan tree? You, my dear. You? No, you're, no, you're the very special one. Rambutan, come, we go in here. Okay, the soil here is really nice. Now, where's your plant? And we're going to plant the tree, the root ball, same level as the ground. Here, it's about the level, right? Yeah? So now we push it all back. And then we got a stick. And I'm going to put this stick here as a marker to know that this is where we planted a tree. Okay? okay? And there we go. Be careful how you go out. Okay? Native species have already adapted to the whole ecosystem that they've come from. It's the most efficient economical way of maintaining biodiversity because imported trees or non-natives or exotics, sometimes they're very invasive. They smother out the native species. Sometimes they're very thirsty. They drown out. They take away all the nutrients from the native species. Sometimes they're very, very, very delicate and they haven't adapted yet to our climate and our humidity or our extra rainy set spells and they rot easily. Sometimes they're more prone to pests and diseases because they haven't um, adapted to building in their own inbuilt defense systems against our local pests and diseases. And also sometimes do not provide any food source for the local wildlife or the local, local and insect life. So instead of doing all that research and development and uh, to adapt to it takes generations. So instead of having that happen, just plant natives, cut to the chase. They're all established. They're the most effective way of restoring an ecosystem is to use native species. So our role is to flesh out the idea of being environmental stewards, not just from egocentric sort of um, way of viewing things, but to understand that it feeds the bigger, wider network of life. Okay, he can have this back. This is his lovely tree, which is a Trungano cherry. Now, Trungano cherry is native, but it comes from the East Coast, where they like it a little bit hot. But because the climate now is heating up, I'm hoping that this guy will do fine. Okay. And when it fruits, it'll have little red fruits, and the birds will like to eat it. Say a little prayer. Oops. And We'll put this stick here. This is a bit of an overkill stick, but it's what I have. So I always just use what I have. Where did we cut a hole just now? Okay. So you, my friend, you, my friend, will be, will be good. Okay? I think that'll be good. Okay. There we go. No. Trungano cherry. Your load is lighter, except for that. Oh, okay. Onwards to the next. Okay, 
we're going up right here. If we walk straight, we would end up near another road and we would have to walk three kilometers back. So we're taking this. Mm -hmm. So Pulai Tren is like a loop. It's, a, it's like a balloon. We're walking around the balloon. So the whole idea was to get people loving and appreciating these little forests so that if there was any pushback by developers, um, people would say, no, 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 we actually need that. We actually go in there. It's not Sama. It's not Beluka. We, we use it, you know, and it's part of what we want to maintain. One, we need to protect with what little bits of forest we have left because they are our best um, sources of um, refuge for whatever wildlife we would have in a city which is always constantly growing more and more concrete. Um, number two, they, the environmental services that uh, forests provide a city are just crucial to our sustainable, sustainable living, comfortable living, a livability of a city. We need, we need our forests. And three, we cannot depend on the authorities all the time to look after. Right now we're at a point where we need everybody to be aware and appreciate and not take for granted. The urban, um, the urban green spaces that we have. And um, we need to be, have people who love them enough to be able to push back. Should an urban green space be taken away, we need more people to say, no, we, we want that and to push back and fight for it. And that's why urban community forests and, uh, are really, really, really crucial for the survival of these green spaces that they not be taken away from us. The community itself, comes in and helps maintain, comes in and helps monitor. So in Kuala Lumpur, we have um, several urban community forests. It's to encourage the neighborhood to, to come in and be stewards of it. Yeah, that's an urban community forest. We've had one very, very good example, which is they call themselves the Friends of Bukit Kiara, and they had to fight a court case to stop a developer from developing um, a large track of that park and they succeeded. It took a long time and a lot of money and a lot of hardship because they're not funded, but they did it. And that's a very, very good example of the tenacity that human beings have to also survive. People are now more heartened. They know it's possible. They know it is possible to push back and win against um, big corporate money. Um, so that's really brilliant. That's broken and shattered that glass ceiling. So now we know it's possible. Um, and it's very, very heartening and it's incredibly empowering because most of the time we don't care because we think we can't do anything. We think whatever we try and do won't make a difference. But with that one example, it's shown that there can be a difference and um, hopefully that will give people more and more daring and courage to defend all the other urban community forests that are under threat of development. Here we have a clump of rattan. Rattan is a climbing type of palm. You see all the thorns? Now what, how rattans work is they grow on the forest floor. These thorns that they have, yeah, on the tips of their leaves, they catch onto other trees. And they will catch themselves and support themselves and they get to the top canopy. When they get to the top of the tree, they got the sunlight, Boom! Mm. More leaves, right? Yeah. More leaves, the poor tree underneath won't have any sunlight because the rattan will block out all the sun. And eventually that tree, no light, can't make its own food, will die. And also the rattan is very heavy, so the tree falls down. So this is what's happened here. There was a tree that fell down. This clump of paham, uh, uh, rattan, when I've been working here for four years now, I think three trees, three trees have come down. That's how nature is. This is its way of trying to survive. Yeah? Come. Here's another tree that came down because of rattan. You see all how tall the how long the thorns are? This is not the rattan leaf, right? Oh. Different, right? So one theory is the re use for this uh, thorns is that when the wind blows, it will catch all the leaves of other trees, leaves and form its own compost bin because I said earlier palms are very hungry and they take a lot of minerals off the soil so this is what their way to make sure they get enough food yeah with the thorns on the side
In 2019, there was a huge potential development that was launched on this side of the hill, and it was going to be massive. The artist impression was like something ridiculous. I might be exaggerating, but something like 13 towers, which were going to be 60 stories high, all at the front back there. And that just frightened a lot of the residents because, my goodness, where is all the water going to go? Where is all the traffic going to go? Consequently, the big old trees that used to be in the compound that was um, refuge for a lot of insects and birds and also helped with the cooling of the area, um, they have been removed. But, you know, that's the standard thing that happens with development. And perhaps um, they will plant back trees to replace them. This construction site is because of slope mitigation work, because the slope was beginning to fail. And so in order for them to repair the slope, they cleared all the trees, they ignored nature because man doesn't know how to control in their minds nature. They cleared off all the anchor, root anchoring trees and shrubs and they cleared it to put a man-made structure in. So there are going to be two levels of retaining wall made out of rubble stone. And then they're going to put geotextile down and rubble stone on top so we can't even plant trees. And then the bottom half will be grass. We tend to make more problems than solve the problem once and for all. So we see how that goes, but I'm not an engineer, so I can't talk. I really don't know anything about slopes. But that's what they're going to do. But hopefully we'll be able to plant more trees back on the ground level, I mean on the lower level, and then hopefully it won't be so exposed anymore. Yeah. Are we all here? All good? Nobody left behind? Awesome. We're going to go right here because this is now our shortcut. Well, they detour. were very concerned about their bungalow um, having the slope beneath them in the Pulai Trail was not stable. And so the authorities were calling to look at the eroding slope, which is quite dangerous. And consequently, to improve that slope, to stop it from failing, they cut a whole swathe, at least 100 meters length, width, length of forest slope was cleared. And they are um, putting in retaining structures to stop the slope, uh, to reinforce the slope. And because of that, we've lost quite a few trees, tall big trees and a lot of vegetation. Um, we are not sure how much we can plant back because a lot of geotextile be used to line the ground. And obviously with geotextile, the, the whole idea is to suppress roots. You don't want anything to grow up. So to me, it's necessary. Um, I'm not an engineer and I'm not an expert, but from when I view it from afar, I see it as how a good example of how everything that man does we are trying the best we know, but it might not be the most sustainable way because even when we come back and repair, we still take away more of nature. Rather than letting nature work for us, we tend to clear nature away and do it the way we know, which is with cement to the detriment of our environment. I'm hoping that there will be more interest in in using more natural, natural methods for slope stabilization because we need as much greenery as we can. And so I have hope that it might not be at this project, but perhaps the next slope further down or another project, we will, humans, we will be constantly learning and trying to improve how we manage our built environment. And we hopefully we will skew it more towards nature because bottom line is, you know what? Nature's going to bite back. If it can't hold, if the slope can't hold and it's really, really heavy rain, it's going to fail. So we're going to in. Yeah, it's a big learning curve for for humans. I think big learning curve. How are you doing? OK. Not too hot. You've got to love what you want to protect. You show the enjoyable side of looking after things and we show it in a fun way. And that's what communities do. Every time there's a gotong royong, we, there's fun and laughter and conversations and sharing of stories and maybe at the end of it shared food, you know, and drink. So that's, that's how communities in the villages have always been. And now in our urban society, we have lost our villages. We don't have that village network system. 
and we have to recreate that and, and make new. Being in the neighborhood like this where Free Tree Society is, um, we hope that we are being very accessible to the community around us to come in and dip in and understand and learn and be able to have that village energy and, and uh, support um, of Gotong Royong for our, our Alam Sikita. We would really like to encourage everybody, just come. It's a very short trail. It's only one kilometer long. If you want to extend it further to the Jungle File Trail, it's, it's all very doable, which is like a 20, 25 minute walk. Enjoy it, appreciate what's in there, talk about it, get to know it, invite more people to come and dip into it. By knowing it, you will be able better to protect it. Personally, for me, working at Free Tree Society is one of the most gratifying jobs. I get to talk to two fresh groups every week about the environment, you know, and I love talking. And, and so that for me is one great way to um, reach out to people and to talk about environment and the importance of it. But um, you're working with plants, you're working with outdoors, in nature. I have a connection with it every day if I come in. I mean, that's special. This is our office. I am sitting in our office. How special is that? A free, Team Free Tree Society really is incredibly blessed um, to have this space, which is um, leased from a developer in the area. Um, and we're very, very grateful for it. I'm working with a fantastic team. It's not one person, it's a great team. We all know our roles. We all support each other where we can. We all have the same goal. We might come from very, very different backgrounds, we lend what we can from our different backgrounds, but we all have the same mission, which is to get more and more people to fit our agenda of, of us being better stewards towards nature. I'm really grateful and thankful for the job. And what do I get out of it? Hopefully I'm a calmer person. Nature teaches me a lot. Why I love going into the Pulai Trail or being out in nature is that I'm always, always, always learning something from nature. And all those life lessons that my mother, father, teachers used to tell me, I'm only now seeing it more clearly as I see nature. And nature teaches me tenacity. It teaches me how to survive. And it teaches me how to adapt. Because everything in the Pulai Trail is just adapting the best it can to survive without complaining without whinging, <laughs> without worrying, you know, what's on Netflix, is it good or bad or not? So, you know, so it's a lot to learn and I'm very appreciative for the time in my life where I can learn something new every day. Yeah, that's it. <laughs>